I'm Daniel Print, and I'm a staff writer here with The Movie Buff, and you're watching The Movie Buff Show. In this conversation, I spoke with the team behind the four-minute musical short film Thirsty, which had its premiere at Tribeca Film Festival this past Monday. I spoke with the film's director and writer Josh Peterson, its composer and executive producer Alexis Hart, who wrote the song Thirsty, as well as the star of the film Rob Nielsen. The film is about a dried-up old seafarer, played by Nielsen, who chases this figure across an apocalyptic desert in a modern parable set to Alexis Hart's song. The film is available on Tribeca at Home as part of the Shores Pass, and you can watch it through June 23rd. More info is below, and let's get right into the conversation for Thirsty. Okay, so whoever wants to start, just introduce yourself, just uh, your role on the film, and uh, yeah. And your okay, name. Yeah, I'm, I'm Josh Peterson, and I uh, wrote and directed and edited and co-produced the film Thirsty. Cool. And Rob, did you want to go next? Or Alexis? Yeah, well, I, I yes, I, I was the, uh, the old coot that Josh persuaded to walk, walk through the desert with him, uh, only because we've been working together for about 100 years. Um, he's, he's edited my films, he's acted in them, it's been a... So whatever he tells me to do, in other words, I'll do it. Rob Nielsen is the name. Awesome. Hi, I'm, I'm Alexis Hart, and um, I am the songwriter slash composer and uh, executive producer of Thirsty. Cool. It's great to have you guys all here. I'm Daniel, and uh, this is The Movie Buff. Uh, so my first question is, do you guys consider this a short film, or is it a music video? Ha ha ha. Good question. Depends who we're talking to, really. No, it, it's. I, I would just say that it's a, it's a short film. Um, I think people tend to take things more seriously when you say it's not a music video, but you call it a film. So um, that's why I say depends who we're talking to. But it's really both. I mean, it's it's the length of the song, and it um, it is anchored in the song, but it's its own piece of work. Um, and I certainly did not want something where I was you know, lip syncing to my own song. So I never liked doing that. So not a music video in the traditional sense, but um, it's a short film and a music video is what I would say. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's both, but I really always thought of it as a, as a short film. And it has a little, uh, we do expand around the edges of it. There's a little bit of a prologue before the song begins and a little bit of stuff happens after the, uh, after the song ends. So um, in my mind, it's always been a, a four minute short. Okay, do you have any thoughts on that, Rob? <laughs> uh, these guys, are, these guys, they tell me where to go and what to say. No, I, I, think, I think Josh is right. I think, I think the beauty of what he accomplished and the beauty of the song, but the only reason, the other reason I wanted to do it is I really believe in the, in the feeling and the gentle uh, vision of the song. And so, yeah, it can be anything that you want it to be. Uh, and, and to me, it's, it was an experience of, uh, there, there were so many coincidences with my own uh, relationship to that desert and other things that I, I really have a hard time telling, telling you what it is, except that I love it. Okay, what, what desert did you guys film in? We filmed in Western Nevada. Um, I had gone out uh, uh, a month prior to the shoot and kind of scouted out a bunch of old ghost towns um, and, you know, playas and uh, found a, <clears throat> a few that worked. And, um, you know, we uh, then drove out in a single vehicle. This was a very, very bare bones, uh, skin of your teeth production. Um, and it being COVID times, we were all multiply tested, wearing our masks all the time in the car and barreling down the freeway at 65 miles per hour with all the windows wide open. So um, it was a little hard to have conversation as we went, uh, but we had a blast. Um, it was a really, really great adventure. And, um, you know, I had always wanted to, not just because our budget was small, I had always wanted to make this a really lean and mean and agile production. So the crew was me and uh, Alexis was our producer and driver and Rob was our cast. So it was a three man production. And um, that meant that although the thing was scripted and I had a plan for everything, we could react in real time 
um, and be inspired by the locations as we discovered them and come up with inspirations in the field in the moment. And um, that's the way I like to work in general. And um, Rob and I go way back, Alexis and I go way back. There's a level of trust. Um, we can all kind of hold hands and jump off the cliff together and, um, and feel like we'll, we'll land safely somehow. Josh had all his equipment, including tripod, and reflectors and cameras and everything in a, in a small backpack, and we, and and that's how we went. That was, the, which to me is the way films sh will increasingly go because it becomes so possible to do work like this in a small and intense uh, situation. Okay. Yeah, and it really it, it enables it enables and encourages experimentation and risk and um, you know all of this stuff and, and discovery right you know it's like I, I always believe it's it's great to have a plan it's great to go in knowing what you want to do and have you know the base baseline stuff laid out there but also be open to chance and um, surprise yeah now, now speaking of surprises did you guys know about that boat before filming I didn't. Um, that was something I had looked, I had researched. Um, I had driven past it many times without knowing it. And it is something that a lot of people have seen. It's in Inverness in Northern California. Um, and um, it's in a very different setting than we might think looking at the film itself. Um, so we've kind of disguised you know, where, it, where it is. And I did a little digital trickery to kind of dress it up a little bit beyond that. Um, but it was, I mean, one of the fun things on this was, you know, looking for old wrecks, looking for old ghost towns. And there is this wealth of incredible locations out West um, where you can, um, you know, uh, and a lot of those things are easily accessible. Um, that was one of them. So, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I, I, uh, I feel like I have a compendium now, a, a great list of, of locations that we didn't even get to use. So, um, you know, Rob, hit me up next time you're looking for a ghost town location for your films. Yeah, well, I got a bunch up in Modoc County too. That's right. Northeastern Nevada, I can tell you about it. Next time you do something as silly as this. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Now, how hot was it filming? Oh, sorry, Rob. No, go ahead. It was not that hot, I would say. Um, it's interesting because you know my first location scout, I had actually gone down in July down to uh, near the Mojave Desert and uh, Death Valley area. Uh, my wife mm -hmm. and I took a little trip and uh, discovered very quickly that it was probably not a good idea to try to shoot in the summertime down there. I remember one evening, it was at about 6 p.m. It was 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, we thought we'd spare ourselves um, that. So. Looking in Western Nevada and shooting in the fall, because we shot mainly in September, October of last year, uh, meant that it was fairly moderate. It was sunblasted, but uh, we weren't risking <laughs> risking our lead actor's uh, health or, or our own in the process. Okay, and Rob, what's it like wearing a suit in the desert? <sighs> Well, you know, I don't know. It, it was it, what, once you got once I understood or tried to understand what Josh wanted to do, I tried to just throw throw it all away. Any thought of, of anything I'm wearing or anything I'm all I'm trying to do is feel how it would feel to to try to get as as far into it as I could. So, but it wasn't that hot. I mean, I, I don't. It was only my my legs are not everything they were once. I remember one time we were we were walking along this narrow ledge over a pit, I don't know, 100 feet, 20 feet deep down, which is an old lead mine or an old silver mine. And, and outside my, outside the camera, I was actually holding Alexa's hand so I wouldn't fall, I wouldn't fall into the pit. It was more things like that that were more, more taxing but no yeah clothing whatever I, try, I tried to be there as much as i could i mean it's a very primal character you know as written it's very mysterious you know it's a very open-ended thing right in such a short thing we're not kind of developing a backstory or um you know specific specifics of character so much as just this kind of raw human experience of being out in this extreme environment 
um, and then maybe a general sense of you know the themes of the film, which are about you know environmental disaster and uh, intergenerational questions of responsibility or guilt or forgiveness. And um, so what I wrote and how I directed Rob was really kind of ele elemental and kind of moment to moment. And one of the great things about working with Rob is, um, like I said before, there's that trust. Um, and he's an amazing actor and, um, and stunt man. I even had him doing stunts at one point. And um, he was there 100%. I was really pushing him to the extremes emotionally and, and physically. And um, Alexis and I both, you know, he was all in and we just had to keep up with him, so. Okay, gotta ask about the stunts then. Oh yeah. Was, was that the falling into the, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know so if you wanna spoil. In, yeah, so there's a scene, you have, I'll try not to spoil it, but uh, Rob had to do a, a backward fall um, that, um, you know, would be challenging for anyone, but he did it beautifully. And, um, he did one test before the camera rolled and, uh, one keeper and that's what we had. And, uh, it worked great. He was fearless. And that, okay. that, well, I didn't, just didn't show it. <laughs> See, I feel like I would have been more scared going across that ledge you were talking about. <laughs> Well, doing the yeah, that one would that was well, you know, I'm, the guy's holding my hand, he's gonna yank me back, right? He won't let me die because then he wouldn't have a video. <laughs> that's right. There's trust in them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, uh, what was it like create I, I don't know if you want to spoil, but what what was it like creating that visually with uh, that fall and that transition? That effect. Um yeah. yeah, I'd rather not spoil it too much. Um, okay. but I will say that it was done very simply. Um, you know, it was, it was actually, that was one shot that was shot on an iPhone because I could get a really high uh, 4K frame rate on it. And it was, comp you know, the compositing was done in After Effects. Um, and this is really, you know, these are tools that are available to anybody. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I basically did the effect myself and then this really good effects artist named Chris Green kept, stepped in to polish it for me. And to me, it was really just, you know, I wasn't interested in doing a very effects heavy thing, but I wanted there to be some moments of kind of surprise and wonder. And so for me, it's about just conceiving and designing something that really caref like that really carefully in terms of how it fits in narratively and what this sort of emotional context around it is. And then just executing it technically as well as could be. Um, but it's a very simple moment. And I think if it works, it's really has to do more with how it's, you know, how it fits in the structure of the piece. Um, and obviously, like I said, you know, Rob's performance really sells it. Now, visually as well, like what was it like getting that red hue? Because those, those scenes look pretty cool. Well, that red hue is in a weird way, it's not real, but it is real. Because um, back in September in the Bay Area, we had this really crazy apocalyptic day during the fire season, um, which informs so much of the song and the film in every way. But we had this really, really bizarre day. I'd never lived anything like this, where we woke up and the sky was a dark, reddish, angry orange. Um, and it turned out it was actually fires from Oregon that had sent a very high level um, layer of cloud smoke um, above us. And um, it was a very, very disturbing sight. Um, the street lights were on all day long. They never uh, went off. Um, and um, it finally cleared later that evening. Um, when it happened, I was up at around, I was in the, up in the morning, like nine or 10 in the morning outside shooting pictures of it because I just couldn't believe it. And it suddenly occurred to me, well, this would be a really interesting look for the final scene of this film, um, which had already been conceived and written, but this idea of this kind of crazy reddish sky um, and this really disturbing reddish light suffusing everything was really, really compelling. Uh, we couldn't get it together to go actually shoot our scene, our coastal scene that day, but I did go online to look and see what it looked like up in that area, which is up in Marin County. There is actually a weather camera on uh, Stinson Beach right near where that boat location is. 
and um, I clicked onto it online and I saw this solid, slightly graded, graded you know, there's some variations and it. it wasn't like a, just a blank, but it was this deep orange red. And I did a screen capture of that and I overlaid that, actually that is the real color um, that's overlaid on that entire scene. Um, so even though we didn't shoot that day, that's what it would have looked like. Um, so there's a weird way in which that is surreal, but it's, it is reality. We had, to, we actually had a day like that here. Okay. That's so cool. I was, I was definitely going to ask if you like kind of got everyone together and was like, ah, oh, we got to go shoot this right now, but it's, that's interesting. I, I did try. I did try, but it was impossible at that late notice, such late notice. Okay. Now I, I'd love to ask like a chicken and the egg situation. Did the, did the song come first or did the, some of the visuals come first? Um, the song came first. Okay. Okay. What, what was it like writing it, Alexis? Um, it was like a lot of songs. It's, um, it's kind of like a little inhabitation, you know, like I get taken over by an idea and, um, it kind of gets lodged in my head and kind of builds itself from there. Um, and, um, the song actually, I wrote it fairly quickly, but it took me a while to figure out how I wanted it arranged. And especially during COVID, like how to record something like that with a real rhythm section, which I always like to do. So I, I have a producer that I work with out in Cape Cod, used to be in Berkeley, but um, he's since moved east, uh, named John Evans. He's, he's an amazing bass player. And luckily he's got a, um, a, a sort of, he had a COVID uh, bubbled session drummer that um, we've worked together a bunch in, in person, but this time we had to do it remotely. So he, I sent, basically sent a, a bare bones uh, version of the song and he got together with his drummer and recorded the, the upright bass and drums, sent it back to me and then I kind of built it out from there, added all the things that you hear in the song like organ and uh, guitar and lots of vocals. Um, but yeah, this, um, and then it was just this wonderful handoff. I think Josh immediately kind of got what I was trying to do with the lyrics. And uh, it's just a, a way we've worked in the past. There's a wonderful kid having a great time behind me. I love it. Um, um, New York is back. It's, it's great. Anyway, uh, we, um, you know, I, I give Josh sort of carte blanche to do what he will with, with the song once it's done. I don't try and um, influence what he does. I, I like what he does so much. Um, and um, yeah, so the, yeah, the song was written first and then it was a, a handoff. And I should say too that, you know, one of the great, Alexis's lyrics are always so amazing and they're so multi-layered and you actually could take this song in a lot of different directions. I kind of zeroed in on one of the things that's there, um, which is this kind of environmental reckoning kind of theme, but there's all kinds of really interesting things there. There's stuff about, you know, sort of deeper personal individual kind of thirsts and needs. Um, and I think, um, you know, Obviously, when you do something like this, you just sort of you jump in and, and pursue the thing that hooks you personally. Yeah. Um, but you know, someone else could have done something very, very different with this, um, and that's part of the richness, I think, of of the song in the first place. Is that it really um, it re you know it's it rewards multiple listens and um, multiple interpretation. Uh, just to, to add to that, the the part that I took was the human thirst to know to feel. And in my case, to define myself and to find, and at the end, to find myself rejecting myself. Wow, what a, what a, that was an awful, uh, awful feeling. And, uh, and yet, in a tragic way, I'm, I'm not, I didn't think I deserved it necessarily to be, to be accepted by my younger self. I didn't, didn't see that, but I, but I did, I did feel that that thirst would always be there. So that was all I Absolutely. Did. Yeah. I think that's the beautiful thing about music is that like, yeah, like with any other, with a different director, it's a completely different short and there's so many different interpretations to it. Yeah. Cool. Now, uh, visually, did you have like, like, so Alexis did like, 
was it like okay handing the baton off and then you were just like you could do whatever you wanted yeah like, what was the collaboration like that's basically as long as we've always worked i mean it, um this is the second we've worked in, in different capacities uh over the over the years we're close friends and we've known each other for a long time but you know he's composed music for other films of mine i've used songs of his as background music in other films um, and then this is the second time that he's asked me to make a short film out of one of his songs. The first one was The Night of My Death, which we did a few years ago and which won awards at CineQuest and Oxford Film Festival and places like that. Um, and both times it's been really wonderful because there's a level of trust there. Alexis just sort of says, gives me free reign, says, what, what would you do with this? And I kind of run with it. And he's always been incredibly supportive. And um, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a great partnership that I really cherish um, because I'm always delighted to hear what he's working on next. He's got some really neat songs going on right now um, and other spoken word kind of um, uh, almost sort of beyond music, sort of narrative uh, soundscape kind of things. And um, it's really cool to have him kind of Present, to be presented with something like this that is a fully formed work of art on its own and, and, and to be told, okay, now how, what would you do with this as in cinematically? Um, and then to just be free to kind of fly off with that and, um, and always know, I always feel like Alexis has my back and he'll uh, support me and you know, together we'll have a result that'll be um, something fresh and new. When when you guys are filming this, are you are you playing the song "Thirsty" over over it? We did listen to it on the drive out there, um, but no, um, I had really scripted it out, kind of beat by you know uh, line by line, and kind of I knew you know how it would all be structured, um, and um, I would sort of listen to it a little now and then on my own just to kind of re, you know feel the mood. Um, you know, part of this whole design and the kind of the, the, de the decrepit saloon at the beginning and the sort of ghost towns and, and Rob's, you know, beat up dusty old, you know, sea captain's uniform, all those things were partly inspired by the way this, the, by the song and the way it's produced particularly, which has this kind of rickety um, sort of Tom Waitsian kind of old, you know, old timey kind of feel to it. So that was one of the things that became, it was a sort of a sonic thing that became theme that became a visual theme and a design theme. Um, I don't know, I, I should ask, you know, I know Rob listened to the song several times and really appreciated it. And obviously it's in Alexis's, you know, bone marrow and blood and uh, sweat. So um, he probably didn't need to refresh that much. But Rob, did you listen to it while we were out there? I can't remember if I did or not, but um, but I but I do like that song a lot. There's just there's just something, and, and you're right about the levels. It doesn't it doesn't reveal itself in a uh, in a in a first kind of listening. You you it, it takes you somewhere, and that somewhere is, is someplace worth examining. So I, I I'm a big fan of it. Visually, this is, I think this is like a short that how I would imagine how someone would do like the Highwaymen with like Willie Nelson and all of them. Sure. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool. Um, now, who's We're available for hire. Oh, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, great. Now, who, I got to ask, who, who got to keep the suit? I still have the suit in a bag in my closet with all of my production gear and um, a few other me mementos of the hat, uh, which appears very briefly, but which I put a lot of work into distressing. Um, We're waiting for so, the, the advent of thirsty year. I mean, part of it for me as a filmmaker is always, I have a tendency to hold on to things like just in case, you know, what if we needed another pickup shot? And then yeah, okay. it sort of, it ends up in a storage area somewhere and I eventually forget that I still have it, but. Uh, it's, it's still actually there. starting a fashion line while I'm in New York and it's going to be based on that look. So you'll see it. And, and you should see it on Madison we, Avenue soon. Like and we should, should actually give a shout out to uh, Emma Grace Eisenman who did the costume design and, and did the whole thing. She designed it. She put the costume together. Um, she did an amazing job. She's a, a student of uh, costume and production design at CalArts. CalArts. Yeah. 
um, okay. and just a really, really talented young woman. Um, and who uh, just did a knock, knockout job on that. And yet it sounds like you're exiling her work to the storage unit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, it's there for, you know, you know when, uh, when there's a museum piece or, or, or tour or whatever, it's, I can always pull it out. I've actually got the, um, the mirror that we used in the creating the salon saloon is in my basement. Um, I put it up and uh, sometime I'll go down there and have a drink and uh, sit in front of it and pretend I'm, pretend I'm Rob. <laughs> hey, well, Josh, you promised that I could be buried in it. <laughs> That's right. You're going to be buried? I thought we were going to put you in a ship and set it on fire. Okay. That's a, a <laughs> put, you on a long, put you on a long boat and make it a Viking funeral pyre. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll get a little aquavit in there and we'll. That's right. We'll yeah. quite a celebration. <laughs> Perfect. Now I have a. I'm going to look at my question. I'll start wrapping up, but. Um, I'm just gonna see if I have any more questions I want I really wanted to ask here. Um, oh, the, that, oh, sorry, what did you say, Rob? I just just realized what your picture is behind there. You didn't put Ooh. that up for our for our purpose, did you? No, it, it's, it's, it's always up there. Oh, that would have been fitting, though. Review. That would have been fitting. That's right. It would have been fitting, but we're not yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I, I don't watch. People have to watch the uh, film to understand the reference. I think. That's right. I don't yeah, know if it's so, desolate so, yeah. enough for the for the style of the film, though. You know, it's, it's related. <laughs> for, yeah, no, uh, I also it's, noticed in the it's the pre pre apocalyptic uh, vision there. Yeah, ah. so you have to watch the film to see the post apocalyptic one. Exactly. See, this is the prequel right behind yeah. me. <laughs> now, I noticed in the in the credits that uh, the child is played by Leo Hart. So, relation to you, Alexis. Uh, yeah, that young man is my son, and okay. he works for free for donuts. <laughs> so, um, and he's going to be at the screening tomorrow. He's really, really excited to see hey. himself up on a big screen. Is so he big the whole family with you? Yeah, everyone's going to be there. Oh, great. Yeah. Cool. Now, is, is he picky about what kind of donuts he works for? Okay. He's kind of a simpleton. He likes the plain ones. <laughs> chocolate chocolate always works okay now yeah. um are you guys excited for the premiere very beyond yeah. yeah yeah it's really exciting it's uh, we're out on this incredible outdoor uh, screen on pier 76 and um it's sold out within a couple of hours when they put the tickets online but it will be also available to stream uh for a limited time on the tribeca platform if people want to see it um and that's easy to do. You can go on there and and uh, and uh, get a, a shorts pass to watch it. But I actually I've seen um, another the opening night film screening was at that same location, and I was there, and I was really impressed with. And New York really knows how to do this. They've really um, made an art out of it. I think in the last last year, 2020, with the pandemic uh, rooftop screenings, um, they've got it nailed down. Technically, it looks and sounds amazing. So. I'm really excited to see it on the big screen there with with the Manhattan skyline as a backdrop. It's it's pretty spectacular. Okay, that's that's perfect. What day does it premiere? Premieres tomorrow, uh, June 14th at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then it'll be available online uh, Tuesday, I think starting 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight. But it says if, if people go on the, um, the Tribeca website and, and search for Thirsty, they can find it. Okay, now... Does like the screen? Is it a problem that it's playing during the day, or is there like a like, that's what, that was my fear, but it's actually not projected. It's actually a gigantic uh, LCD screen, really, really state of the art. And um, I saw a screening that started in the evening while it was still light, and it looked spectacular. I was really, really impressed. Okay, awesome, cool. So I it's one thirty two. So I will start wrapping up. So Josh Peterson, who you you do like everything on the film, <laughs> almost. <laughs> you shoot it, you direct it, you produce it, write it, and to Alexis's music. Uh, and yeah, Alexis Hart, who does the music and composer, executive producer, and then Rob Nielsen, who is the actor in the film. It's been great chatting with you all about Thirsty for the movie buff. Thanks very much. Thank you, Daniel.
Likewise. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stop the recording.